Hello. Today I'm going to talk about live literate programming support in the Newspeak environment. Uh, what's new is that we have good support for editing live literate programming uh, documents within the IDE. Uh, before, if you wanted to create a document that had uh, live Newspeak widgets in it, you sort of had to edit HTML by whatever dark means possible and then uh, you know, set it up to, to start as a page with the right vFuel and everything and see that it worked and this wasn't the kind of live experience that we were looking for. And so uh, now we have a, a bit better support because we've introduced the concept of documents into the IDE and so I'm going to demo that. Uh, we add a document. Let's call it demo doc and we can uh, accept that and demo doc is right here as you can see it says it's a blank document you can also see that this is basically an object presenter uh, a document is of course an, an object in you speak like everything else and so when we want to work with it we can look at the object presenter for that object and uh, the object presenter has a custom view for uh, for documents which is what we're seeing here that shows us the rendered document with uh, this default text in it and if we want to edit it we can actually open this toggle here and we see that the source of this is HTML and we can edit this HTML live like we can go and say something like demo document right and so this this uh, renders live if I want it to be bigger I can make it bigger and uh, I can put in text this is and so uh, so far this is nice but rather uninteresting right it's a two view HTML editor that's great uh, the question is how do we get live widgets into it so the, there's essentially a convention that the system uses. You need to have a, a div of a special class in your HTML. And that class is called, of course, Ampleforth after the character in 1984. Oops, that was wrong. And uh, it has to have a name property. And that name property, in our case, might be called an alert. What the name property does is it names a unary selector, a method that uh, it's going to use that name to call that method on the document, and the document should have a method that will answer uh, a widget, uh, a hopscotch fragment that can be inserted into the document. Let's complete our HTML for good form, even though it's, you know the web browser is very tolerant of these syntax problems but the real problem is that obviously this isn't working we're getting a message not understood because in fact the document does not have an alert and we can see that by looking at the class which uh, since this is an exemplar based system the document the object presenter for the document lets us see the class in the context of the document and that'll let us actually do nice things like evaluate live pieces of code as we'll see in a little while. Uh, but right now the problem is that an alert doesn't exist. Uh, it's fairly easy to add it. We can of course click on this and we'll get the debugger and we might choose to add a missing method, an alert. And uh, there's different things we can do here, uh, but we'll just start and by adding a button, right? And the button will be uh, named an alert and its action will be to uh, basically create raise an alert that says this is an alert and I can accept that and if I go back to my document you can see instead of the message not understood, I actually have a button that says an alert. And if I click on it, I get an alert as expected. 
So this, this illustrates essentially the process of which you would go, you'd edit your document, and when you needed a certain widget, you'd write such a div, and you'd uh, implement it in the class. You can see the class now shows that this has this uh, method. And uh, of course, we didn't have to do it this way. We could have done it by, uh, by adding this directly. So if we rename this another alert, now this fails again because there isn't an another alert method. Uh, but I can create one. I could have gone here and created it. And I can, the nice thing is, uh, since it's an exemplar, I can test code for this right here. For example, maybe I don't remember what the, the call to get an alert is and I want to be sure this is right. And I can evaluate the selection right here and see that it works. I can, in fact, evaluate the entire thing and see that I get a proper button. And I get a button fragment, which is the, the hopscotch widget representing a button. So now I know this is all good. And I accept this. And we're back to having an alert. And really, we didn't want an alert. We want to distinguish them. So we'll call this another alert. And that didn't update. Fantastic. Oh, because we updated the wrong method. You know, that's the problem. We're kind of looking at the wrong thing. But if we update this guy, then hopefully things will work. Yes, that's what we expected to happen. It now says another alert. And do this again. And then we can click on it. And it says this is another alert. So this is already the essence of what's happening here. We can, uh, in fact, uh, do more elaborate things, as I'll show you. Uh, let's go to another example. And uh, we'll have to load some code here. Basically, the example relies on the counter. So we'll load the counter into the system. And then we'll load our documents that are used for this example which are these two. And then we have these documents. So let's look at this one, Live Literate Program Revisited. This is a draft little you know, article I'm writing. And here it is. As you can see, it's a much more elaborate uh, thing than before. And it, for example, has in it uh, a counter. And this counter is live, of course. We have a bit of a issue with scrolling, but as you can see, it did increment, and it'll increment again. And the, def the controls the counter is this method right here. So this is a method from the counter UI class that drives the counter, but we have a method presenter on it embedded here in our document, and we can go and change things. For example, we might say that these words, increment, decrement, they're rather verbose. We want to do it in some sort of very concise and impenetrable style as programmers are want to do. And so we'll rename all these methods, or rather the we'll change the code that controls the buttons that appear here. And we'll accept that. And lo and behold, the counter has changed to show these the buttons correctly. But notice that its state hasn't changed, right? That's the crucial thing. That's what makes this live is the fact that we have the counter in its state and it remains and retains that state and is still in working order whatever we do right uh, despite the fact that we changed the code and this is for a counter it's kind of trivial but the main point is that in any real application for liveness you really don't want to have to to restart things and navigate back to the state you were in that's the whole point of liveness is to get rid of that long tedious uh, delay and and all the work involved and have an instantaneous feedback loop so you can see you can do this now with your uh, with your document. Of course, this thing has uh, has source just as before, right? And in there, there are little pieces of Ampleforth that name the counter right here, this div, Ampleforth div. And there's another one that names the counter definition, which is uh, this method presenter we had here. And we can see them in the class. If we look at the class, then we can see, of course, it has a method counter that creates a uh, presenter for a counter subject. And we have the counter definition, which goes to the IDE and creates a method subject and creates the mirrors and all the stuff that's necessary to actually bring up a method presenter on a specific piece of code. So these things are here. 
And we could have created them ahead of time or on the fly or in response to an error using essentially editing of this class right here in the context of the, uh, of the IDE so that we can, for example, uh, you know, we can verify that any part of this is, is correct. Like, okay, uh, do, is there such a thing as a cla class mirror? Okay, let's see if this code works. And yep, there's a class mirror. This is a correct segment. So we can kind of evaluate this method as we type it in and go along as I showed earlier. So this is, this is uh, nice. And if this gets in the way, we can collapse it again. And here's another interesting thing. We have a nested document. Essentially, one document nested within another. And again, if there's a toggle here for the document as a whole, there's a toggle here for the nested document. And this is the, the source code for the nested document. And we can see that uh, it's here. And we can, of course, edit it, the nested document, just the way we wanted to before. Maybe you don't like this, uh, this whimsical spelling of Emmanuel. So we can change it to be Emmanuel. Like it's, or we could change it to be Emmanuel, or like an electronic manual. And of course, it edits live uh, as, as you want. And if you can't see what's going on, you can scroll and see the entire thing. We can actually uh, resize this guy. It'll make it a bit easier, perhaps, to see what's going on here. so that we can kind of see a bit more of what's going on. And of course, we can add live widgets here. Uh, so again, we can go and uh, add uh, an ample fourth uh, widget here somewhere, like we'll add a, a button. Uh, we don't have to use a div. We can use a span as well. Uh, class equals ample fourth name equals uh, again we want uh, what was the name of the thing we have it here somewhere in the class for this guy uh, but uh, yeah it actually says what we should be using here uh, yeah alert button again is one very inspired name we're using Once we do that, we do have an alert button, and since it's a span, it's on the same line. And if we press it, it gives us an alert, which we should uh, pay attention to. So it behaves just like the, the surrounding document, but it's a nested document in its own right. Um, the document editor has a specialized toolbar that's also collapsed so as not to distract from the main layout, but it can be opened independently of everything else. And that lets us see, for example, is anyone referencing this? And yes, we get a bunch of senders. So it looks like uh, it's being referenced from methods of the surrounding document, the live literate programming document, which has these methods that, that refer to it. And uh, if we go check at live literate programming, yeah, there are, there are these methods, Emmanuel, and which, which reference it. So uh, all that kind of works. Uh, we also have things like inspect presenter. So we can see that this is a document presenter. And of course, we can, uh, we can uh, do other things like, uh, you know, uh, well, we don't have help yet, but that's, that's coming. Well, most importantly, we can save either this document, the nested document, or the entire document, because again, we have the same idea here, a toolbar for this document. And so we can save the whole thing uh, using this button, and it'll save it as an HTML file that has both the HTML contents that you're editing, plus a bunch of uh, you know HTML boilerplate that the system needs around this to, to keep things uh, coherent. And you can take that HTML and you can attach it you know, then you can pair it with a suitable ample fourth v, v fuel uh, so that it'll display as a standalone web page, for example, uh, outside of the IDE. And uh, yeah, I think those are the, the essentials. Uh, this is a process by which you can essentially 
write documents, have them nicely rendered, and embed arbitrary widgets, uh, which could be for littered programming or they could be for visualization in general, right? They're just UI widgets of, of whatever kind you need. And it's very easy to, to do this as you type and it provides, I think, a nicer editor editing experience than most. Of course, it needs work and polish and all the things that we don't have the resources and you speak to to handle. But uh, I think this, uh, this is really uh, what I wanted to illustrate today is just give you a sense for how this stuff uh, works in the current prototype. So thanks for listening and I hope you found it interesting.